when we are in partnership and have stopped clutching each other's throats, when we have stopped enslaving each other, we will stand together, hands clasped, and be friends. We will be comrades, we will be brothers, and we will begin the march to the grandest civilization the human race has ever known. That was said by Eugene Debs. Welcome to Surviving the Matrix, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Maxwell Egan. It's a pleasure to be with you once again, and I will be your host for the next hour. Well, it's certainly been a very intense week, folks. There's been lots going on this week. We had a big workshop here in Byron Bay on the weekend. We had a Road to Sovereignty workshop that was attended by myself, some of the original elders. Carrie Ann Cox was there, some people from the Kimberley country. Mark McMurtry was there. And we discussed some of the things that are happening in the world and some of the directions that we should be taking. There was also quite an amazing ceremony after the event in which Kerry Ann Cox activated the beginning of the song lines that stretch across the globe, the song lines that start in the east coast of Australia in Byron Bay. And since this song line activation happened, there have been reports coming in to Kerry Ann from elders around the country who have been saying that the ley lines are moving, that the crystal centre of Uluru, which is the Earth solar plexus, has been activated and the shift that all people have been expecting has in fact begun. And we're in for some rocky times ahead, folks. It isn't all going to be roses from this point. Things are going to get very polarised. We're going to see both extremes, as we're seeing in London, unfortunately. The riots in London are very, very disturbing. I can understand people's frustration at having to deal with the corrupt government and the corrupt police force in London and in England, but rioting in the streets is certainly not the way to fix things. Unfortunately, we're seeing gangs of youths smashing shops and burning cars and looting and doing all sorts of things. And this is happening in response to a man who was shot by British police. And this appears to be what has sparked the riots. But of course, one must pause to question why those who are rioting are not simply attacking police stations and government buildings. Why they are wandering through London and smashing shop windows and looting and stealing from people and burning cars and basically attacking themselves. What we're seeing in London is the people attacking each other because they are angry with the government. And this, of course, makes no sense at all and can only ever have the effect of giving more power to the government they claim to be writing against. And I would suggest that there is a huge clue there for people as to who is really in charge of all these riots and who has, in fact, instigated the violence to begin with. Because, you see, that's what's happening, folks. If you attack shop owners and you smash shop windows and burn cars, the people you are attacking are people just like yourself. They are simply citizens who are in the same position that you are. I mean, maybe they are a little more financially secure because they may own shops. And that would simply indicate that by attacking their shops, you are, in fact, jealous of the position that they hold. It doesn't mean that you are doing anything right. It doesn't mean that you are attempting to bring about change in your country. It simply means you are a disgruntled idiot who is out smashing things and destroying the lives of other people in order to gain a little bit of self-gratification. And you are being very, very instrumental in bringing about the police state that you seem to be so fearful of ever being subject to. So, in fact, you are acting as your own worst enemy and you are ensuring that you and your children will have a very, very uncomfortable future. Either that or perhaps those who are instigating the violence are in fact being paid 
to do so, and the people are simply following along because that's what sheep will do. And that actually seems like the most likely scenario because having a riot is not a way to change things, folks. It will not bring about any positive change at all. It will only ever give more power to those who are currently in charge. And there are far better ways, folks, because you don't even need to riot. All you need to do is to stop complying with the system. That's all you need to do. Remember the Illuminati motto, folks, Auto ab chao, order out of chaos. And of course, in order to obtain such order, one must first bring about the desired chaos so that order can then be implemented. I've often said that there is only one law of creation, and that is unconditional love and service to the creation. If you wanted to look at that from another perspective and think about, well, okay, that's very good in that respect, but what about restrictions? What sort of restrictions do we put on humankind to ensure that they behave properly? Well, that's simple, folks. There's one rule. You do no harm. And that's it. So... If you are out and you are smashing shop windows and you are burning cars and you are looting and you are beating up and stealing from other people, then you are doing harm. You are not serving the creation. You are being all of the things that you claim to be standing against and you basically should be locked up for your actions. And I can really offer no support to rioters who are simply destroying the infrastructure around them because they are angry with the government, because they are, in fact, simply attacking other people who are also enslaved to the same government the rioters are pretending to be rioting against. It really is very sad to see, folks, when something as simple as non-compliance would be much more easy to do and would be a hundred times more effective than what is currently happening in England. Because, as I said, all these rioters are doing is bringing about a police state. I mean, the government wants the populations to riot. That's why the government has spent so long enslaving the populations to debt and creating a situation where people are going to simply go off the deep end because... They feel that enough is enough. But they don't have to riot, folks. All they have to do is stop complying with the system, and it works. It absolutely works. And if you get in trouble with the system for not complying with it, then that is also easy to remedy by gaining a very simple and very basic understanding of equity and trust law. And this is another thing that I've been attempting to share with people for many months now. And folks, of course, when you look at what's happening in London, what we are seeing is obviously staged. It is absolutely staged. And the word that I've had from people that live in London, that have sent me messages, actually some of my forum moderators come from London, and one in particular has been sending me messages, and he says that the word on the street is that what we are seeing is a -a rent-a-crowd and they are the ones that are going out smashing shop windows and causing all the violence, and then other people are simply joining in. And, of course, folks, they're joining in because this is what they are programmed to do through violent movies, through violent video games, and basically being miseducated by the system itself. People are trained to react this way, and then all you have to do is repress the people enough, put them in enough shortage, put them in a state where the youth of the country is is just going to reach a stage where they've had enough and they're going to stand up and become violent because that's what teenagers do. I mean, it's a very, very volatile time of life, folks, and we've all done it. We've all been out of control at some stage when we were teenagers. Well, most of us have anyway. And so all you have to do is put people in a state where they have absolutely had enough and then go and shoot some kid on the street and get a gang to go out there and start rioting because of it, and of course everybody is going to join in. And the word on the street also is that 
when these situations are erupting, police are just standing by and doing nothing. Because, of course, folks, they've got to present the whole situation in such a way that it's absolute, uncontrollable, chaotic violence, and we don't have enough police. We need more police. We need more surveillance. We need the army on the ground. We need martial law. The citizens are out of control. They're all violent. They're, they're smashing each other's shops and looting and doing all these terrible things. We need martial law. And that is what this is all about. It's classic Hegelian dialectic, problem, reaction, solution. And all the people who are out there riding on the streets in London at the moment are, in fact, bringing about the police state they are speaking out against. That's all they're doing. That's the only effect it will possibly have. will be a whole bunch more new and much tighter legislation and a much stronger police presence on the ground. And you don't have to do any of it, folks. All you have to do is get an understanding of trust law and equity and free yourself from the system. You know, if, if people would just follow the one law of creation, unconditional love and service to the creation, serve the people around you as if they were yourself and serve yourself as you would serve others. That's it. Do no harm. And what could possibly go wrong from that point? Everybody would be living in harmony with each other if they simply followed those basic rules of creation. It's very simple to do, and it absolutely works. And if you live your life in that way, and you drop all the fear and all the judgment that you hold for others, then your whole life changes. It just happens, folks, and it's really that easy. And I think it's an extremely important time for people to gain these understandings. I, I really do. I absolutely believe we are in a time of great change. I absolutely believe that the shift in consciousness we've been expecting has already started. That's why all of this knowledge is coming to the foreground now. That's why things like trust law are coming to the foreground. Everything is being exposed. All of the curtains and the facades are coming down. Everything is being brought out into the open. Everything. And this brings with it a huge opportunity for humankind. It really does. Because there is opportunity in all change, folks. There really is. And I absolutely believe that it's going to be all types of change as well, folks. It isn't just going to be good change. There's going to be all types of things happen. And what is most important through this period is that people do not dwell in a state of fear. It's, it's very important that you are energized and are positive and that you leave fear behind you and i really believe that the remedy to this fear is in having an understanding of what reality is and in having an understanding of how the system works and realizing that you're actually free and i think that if people can simply look at things from a different perspective just step outside of the box and just take a look at how everything is structured and look around them and connect with the people around them and support the people around them, the whole world could change so incredibly easily. And any transition that we were to go through would be a positive and welcome one and would have a positive and welcome effect. And that's what we need to do. Understanding reality and understanding how the system works and understanding how the legal system works is what will set you free of fear. Because... Most of the problems that we face, folks, it's all from fear-based mind control. Even the money system itself puts humanity in a state of fear-based mind control. It's a fear of shortage. It keeps people running on the treadmill, running around collecting paper so that they have security in life. They believe that paper is wealth, but I don't believe paper is wealth. I think that wealth is country. Wealth is sunshine. Wealth is the wind on your face. Wealth is friends to talk to. Wealth is having knowledge of your surroundings and being at one with the earth and at one with creation and living in a state of service so that creation serves you back. To me, that is wealth. That is real wealth. A wealth of energy, a wealth of understanding, a wealth of joy and connection to spirit and to people around you. 
that is wealth. 